And so for women, I just think um, kind of, again, along the lines of int- of emotional chastity is not to grasp. You know, I think it's so important for us as women to be pursued and to allow men to pursue us. And it's hard in this culture because I, I do tell the ladies, you know, you're going to have to wait because some of these guys, <laughs> unless they've heard fathers talk. <laughs> mm, they are immature. <laughs> yeah. Hello and welcome to Belonging on Nashville Catholic Radio, the show for young adults here in the Diocese of Nashville. My name is Zach Jansen. We're joined by Father Gervon with the University Catholic here. We also have Courtney Soto that also does a lot with the University Catholic and a lot with the Diocese of Nashville. Uh, so Courtney, thank you for being on the show today, for giving us your time. Yeah, I'm excited to be with you. Uh, we have a great presentation uh, on dating today, which I'll let you all take away. But t- tell us a little bit about what you do, your background in, in here uh, with the University Catholic real quick. Yes, I serve with Father Gervon as coordinator of campus ministry. Um, and so we just work with college students, primarily Vanderbilt, Belmont. But we also work with Tennessee Tech, MTSU, um, Austin P, And we just... Um, we just create programs for college students so that they can know the Lord and, and not lose their faith during college. College students who are trying to find their vocation, and one part of that is possibly the sacrament of matrimony, which we may be leading up to here with the topic of dating. Uh, so please t- tell us the name of y'all's presentation and kind of where you want to start with it. Yeah, we, we got this presentation. It's called To Date or Not To Date. So it's a presentation that we did here at University of Catholic in Nashville and in other campuses as well. So it's just a, a understanding a little bit, and I was telling before we started the show that is, this is like an hour and a half, two hours presentation, so we're just going to yes. kind of give a little bit of the taste of the presentation. Okay. So especially today because, you know, the culture dating, of dating has changed. You know, f- single people are acting like they are dating, dating people are pretending they are married, and married people live their lives as they are single. I love it. So that's kind of how the culture uh expect it or not expect but how how things work right now you know and in the past chastity was something that was a given it was nobody was you know even talking about yes you're gonna wait until you get married to you know to have sex and that has changed and just some some interesting statistics you know about the whole cup culture because what happened is uh, with the whole who cup culture is like oh it's easier or you know, some misconceptions. We're going to do this because both of us agree on doing this, so we are not going to get... Nobody... That makes it okay. Yeah, it makes it okay. Nobody... And we know that all that is lie. You know, it's just a lie. You know that we can't do this. So just some some, um, statistics. So for those who hook up, only 5% feel good about hookup. Only 2% feel desirable or one... A wanted after a hookup. 67, 63% of college age men said they would prefer a traditional romantic relationship to a hookup. They hook up two eyes as frequent, frequently as they go to first date. And more than 90% friends with benefits never involve into a committed relationship. So they might ask, do they want me or the pleasure that they get from me? Exactly. So with our students, you know, we want to encourage them to obviously avoid the hookup culture, but it's more than that. We just really want to promote healthy relationships. And I really think at the foundation of any healthy relationship um, are solid boundaries. And so one thing that we just want to make sure, you know, young adults, college students, anybody who's really moving toward their vocation um, just begins with how do I have healthier friendships and then how do those friendships move towards a healthy relationship? Um, And so there's just kind of classic boundaries. There's physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual boundaries that are very important. And Father was getting to, like, physical boundaries. It's pretty self-evident. You know, you really shouldn't be hooking up. But emotional is just as important. Exactly. Emotional chastity is talked about a lot in Catholic circles, and especially for women, right? Like, women want to give their heart away sometimes too quickly, Um, before they really get to know a person. So emotional is just as important. But it's funny, I I was actually teasing, you know, Vanderbilt students about intellectual boundaries too, because it's like, sometimes we exalt 
the intellect a little too far and you might pick the person who is going to be a doctor, but he <laughs> might not have solid character. Right? Yeah. So uh, we, we don't want to, and I, and I told my Belmont students too, you know, and somebody has to marry the music business major, right? <laughs> right, Zach? <Jack? laughs> so we don't want to over exalt the intellect. And even spiritually, you know, and, and that's what I think really applies to a lot of, you know, people who are wanting to grow in their faith and they're wanting to be better Catholics. It's like sometimes, though, we can go to another extreme and we want the person that prays, you know, 10 rosaries every day. <laughs> but we still have to not um, really like monetize the spiritual either, but just look for who has authentic faith. And so boundaries are, are really important across the board. Um, and, and I really also just want to speak to women because that's one reason why Father and I, you know, formed this partnership is he's speaking to the guys, I'm speaking to the girls. Sure, yeah. <laughs> and so for women, I just think um, kind of, again, along the lines of, int- of emotional chastity is not to grasp. You know, I think it's so important for us as women to be pursued and to allow men to pursue us. And it's hard in this culture because I I do tell the ladies, you know, you're going to have to wait because some of these guys, (laughs) unless they've heard fathers talk. (laughs) Mm, They are immature. (laughs) Yeah, they're going to make you wait a minute, but it's worth the wait because you're that valuable. And I just think that that's a message that um, young ladies really need to hear. And so I think part of it is, okay, so what does it look like then, um, you know, for both men and women, if you have somebody you're interested in and you want to move to the next level and you want to do it in a healthy way. And, and I, one of my catchphrases is, you know, we got to avoid that Catholic awkward, you know, this isn't a third grade dance. And so we have to get the boys to be involved and to actually do the asking, but also for the women, again, we have to make sure that, you know, we're not attached too quickly that, you know, this is one date, this isn't marriage, this isn't an immediate commitment. This is literally two people getting to know each other and seeing if they're a good fit, a good match. Um, And so I think that's kind of how the boundaries help us move towards that healthy relationship. And then really what we're looking for is just authentic friendship, you know, that has that romantic element. So you are looking for someone who calls you to virtue. You are looking, you know, for God to actually place somebody in your path who is better than, you know, what you imagined for yourself. I think sometimes we limit ourselves that way. Um, And so kind of the last message I have for girls is also just, you know, we have to kind of be aware of our emotional health in this whole dating journey. And so part of emotional health for women, I think, is to avoid um, kind of to go beyond that Disney mentality that I think a lot of us grew up with where we have, you know, this perfect picture of Prince Charming in our minds, but that's not realistic, especially if you're in college. <laughs> you can't set the person on a, on a pedestal. Exactly. And, and, and not only that, too. I think that a lot of times that we are looking for the perfect per- person, you know, this beautiful, whatever, handsome man that is going to come almost like in a horse, and, you know, like... <laughs> The, the the whole idea of the Disney prince, and, and another way too, like they're, that they're gonna like they're your other half, like literally, like I am incomplete without this person. Mm-hmm. It's like no, you're already this person's not gonna make you whole. Only yeah. God can fill that. Yeah, that's that's the truth. And it's <laughs> there's a friend of mine that he called those the, those men like the dragons, mm-hmm. you know, the ugly ones. Those people, <laughs> they can be people of good character, you know. Like so, it's not only the princes. Go find the dragons. They are here, you know. <laughs> they are good people as well. It's choosing to love the imperfect person. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's also, again, just allowing yourself to be rooted and grounded in reality and not, you know, some sort of fantasy, I think is is the bottom line. And, And I think also it helps us as women, too, to not have, you know... I too strong of a response to be more patient. Um, again, what we say is while we're waiting for the guys to, you know, ask you out, sometimes women feel ignored. And, and so sometimes anger can be a response. And, and I always tell the ladies, you know, let's, let's not get angry. Let's give the guys a chance to mature and do their part and just understand that we're both imperfect and we both have to give each other a little bit of leeway. Yeah. The, mat- the maturity level is so different. You're right. Especially in, in high school, but well, for, for 20 something too, the guy in his 20s is thinking about video games or can I go get a drink with my guys? Yes. And the woman is thinking, where's my husband? I want to find yeah. him right now and start my family. Um, but it's totally different, yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure so kind of my last, um, you know, 
comment for women is is really just to echo a sentiment from Edith Stein. I think we always have to look to the saints um, to find our inspiration and our wisdom, even with dating. And Edith Stein, you know, she is a, a female saint who did an excellent job just going really through the psycho- the psychology of both male and female. And she really unearthed, you know, a lot of depth and wisdom on what it is to be a woman. And she said, you know, the deepest feminine yearning is to achieve a loving union, which in its development validates um, maturity and simultaneously stimulates and furthers the desire for perfection in others. And so this yearning, especially for women, can express itself in a diversity of forms. And so she's kind of alluding to that could be in motherhood, physical motherhood or spiritual motherhood. But I just think as women, we have to understand we do have this deep desire. And so we can't, like we were saying, we can't expect one human to fulfill it. That That's really God fulfilling our desires. But at the same time, we have to be careful and guard that desire and not allow it to become disordered. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about like some 10 tips yeah. for, uh, for dating. The first one, live the season of singleness to the fullness. Yeah. It's important for you to know that you can't. You have to live on today. You can't live in something that's like, oh, you know, like that. Almost like the hours tomorrow. What is going to be? Live on today. Be okay with yourself. You know, be okay of not find. You know, don't obsess about finding the perfect person. Become that person, future person that yeah. you prepare want yourself for, to yes, be a better spouse. Yes. For How can I do that? One of the things that is a good friend of mine. She said that she really wanted to be a nun, and then she said no. You know, she was talking to the nuns, and it's like you're not gonna you call to be a, 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 a married woman. And then she said that from that day on, she started to. And she was like maybe ten, eleven years old. She said from that day on, she started to pray for her husband, mm-hmm. pray for your future spouse, for your future spouse. Yeah, so that's a thing. Second, understand the purpose of dating. The purpose of dating is to find a spouse. Period. If that's not your aim, if it is not your purpose, you're not, you're not supposed to be dating. <laughs> you're wasting th- their time is what and you're your doing. your time, too. And both times saying, yeah. no, no, this isn't leading. If you're not, if you, the purpose of dating is to break up or to marry that person. Yes, Amen. it's, you know, and, and it's the person, the purpose is to find that spouse. Mm-hmm. And if it is not what you want, get out. Mm-hmm. Three, <laughs> face your fears. Guys, it's the fear of rejection. It's the fear of committing to the person because someone better might come along, like the the FOMO, right? Fear Mm. of missing out. And the fear of giving themselves because they assume that they will lose themselves in the process. Mm. We want to be in control of the whole thing. Women, some fears not worth pursuing, too much or not enough. And also the other fear is the thing of being alone. I'm just going to get this guy because I'm alone. Therefore, you know, this is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so you kind of enter in that relationship in a really bad shape and it's just out of fear. You know? I agree how women can feel like they're not enough, especially with, with social media. When they yeah, look at, oh, yes. When, when they, when they look at the girls that are that are popular and say, I'm, I'm not her, is that, that's what this guy wants. Yeah. And, and, then, and then you're not being yourself. Eventually. Yeah, and they're like, social media is not real. <laughs> you know, like, my sister's like, let me see if this picture is good enough. Or it's like, <laughs> who cares? You know, like, no, but it's like, no, I, 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 I look fat. It's like, that's how you look. No, I don't, I, you know, take on this angle because, you know, so it's kind of social media is a whole big thing that we, you know, we don't, unfortunately, we don't have to, you know, to talk, time to talk today. But four, know what you want. What are our deepest desires? You know, what do we want? And what do you want in a spouse? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I think uh, Father Dan Snyder said on your uh, wedding, Courtney, uh, you know, that he always asks, when he's doing marriage prep is, do you think that your spouse, you know, your fiance is going to fulfill all your desires? No. And of course they say yes. Then they says no. <laughs> you know, only God can, can fulfill your desires. Uh, you know, number five, discern your dates. Discern your relationships. Mm-hmm. Just because you have an experience of mutual attraction doesn't mean that that person is the right person for you. You know, 
is this the right time to date? You know, sometimes I work with the guys all the time. I just broke up and I feel alone and therefore I'm going to find a girlfriend. Hold on. Let's <laughs> work on you first. Are you, is this the right time for you to date? Mm-hmm. Or is this something that you just want to show her that you don't need her and therefore you find another, you know, uh, another and, girlfriend and right and away? If anything, breaking up gives more clarity in a way too. It said, I crossed off, not crossed off that person, but I know I just narrowed it down by one. My search, if I am. yeah, but and then like, how are you of that? Pro- how 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 did you get out of that process? Are you okay to give yourself to other person right now, or you need time for yourself? Mm-hmm. You know, how, what are the hurts? What are the stuff? You know, it can be the right person at the right time, but it can be the right time, the wrong person. It can be the right person by the wrong time, and it can be the wrong time and the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. So you have to discern that, you know. Look for love in the right places. Yeah. You know, and we we have a whole a whole thing about dating apps. <laughs> uh, we we really believe that uh, uh, dating apps is not a place for college students. Yeah. You know, look on the right places. You and know. even young adults, if yes. I may j- jump in, Father, because, you know, I really think that dating apps were designed for, you know, were older working individuals who, because of their careers or really special circumstances, couldn't find someone. But if you are a college student, if you are a young adult, you're usually surrounded by your peers. And so there's no, and the dating apps also promote this whole um, superficial searching where I'm going to find that person that has my same Spotify playlist or checks off literally boxes, mm-hmm. but it's like, you're not allowing yourself to see the mystery of the person in an app. I was talking to Bishop Spaldi the other day. Uh, one of the things that we drive a lot together, going to confirmations and stuff. So we were talking about how the apps, what they do is they finding those guys who are the popular guys mm-hmm. and the apps are giving them some money or whatnot so they can keep on the app. Oh. And now they see what the girls want. So now the apps, what they're doing is, <laughs> this is this is kind of creepy, <laughs> they are creating fake profiles mm-hmm. of those perfect guys. And then the app itself will contact the girls two time and then stop. Hmm. That's terrible. I mean... But, you know, so look in It's the, that feeling of being wanted, though, is what they yes, want to see. Yes, absolutely. Some, some and then, interest yeah, in. and then, but I mean, fake profile again, lies, you know, fake profiles and all that stuff. So, number seven, no missionary dates. You are dating a person, <laughs> not a project. No, you, you don't know, You cannot them. change the head person. Don't feel that it's like, oh, he's so cute, therefore, he's, if the person doesn't have a good character... You can't change because only God can change people's character. So mm-hmm. be realistic. It is not a project. You dating a person to marry, not somebody that, you know, is, is not, it's not, <laughs> no missionary. Mm-hmm. It's not, you're not going to be uh, uh, able to change any fun, anybody. Eight, make the commitment clear. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what, what are we? And I think we talk about this, you know, when the full presentation is the, the desire to define the relationship. You know, a lot of times we have people going, you know, like, we here have a, we here have a, we almost going to start a new company, I don't know, a side job or like <laughs> dating, dating, uh, I don't know what it is. Consultant. Consultant, something like that. You know, we have a rule. On three dates, if you don't get out, you know, it's sad, especially for the women. They'll go weeks, months, and say, "I thought we were in a relationship." Yeah. And the guy will go, "No, no, no we were yeah, just so friends." We really, after the third day, we have to decide: are we either gonna get in the bus or get out of the bus. <laughs> yeah, uh, keep it pure. You know, it's not about it's not about sex. You know, sex is uh, reserved for marriage because in marriage, I am freely giving myself a hundred percent to that person, and that person is giving herself himself 100 percent to me Mm -hmm. so keep it pure you know and unfortunately in our in our in our um culture today you know it's like oh if i have you know oral sex or if i have anal sex it's okay because no it's not that's a lie that's a lie you know one of the things that i always tell the guys if any part of your body is inside of any part of your girlfriend body that's sex well you can answer your own question but it's when you say how far is too far that's probably yes. if you have if you you know and I, the other thing that i always tell is like how far is too far is there 
if her dad was there. <laughs> really? You've done that. If her father was in the room. Yeah. Did you do that? Oh, hell no. I was like, yeah, that's too far. <laughs> and 10, do, don't stop dating when you're married. No. I always date. I always date. I always date. And I think that a lot of times in our day, we're going to give a little bit of like four steps of how to ask a girl out. And, but I, I just need to talk a little bit about sacrifice. Yeah. We don't want to sacrifice nowadays, you know. It's me, me, me. It's all about me. And the root of love is sacrifice, you know. Our culture tries to say that we can lo have love without sacrifice. That's lust. That's lie. You know, we have, you know, we do not want the risk of rejection. So that's why it's a lot of times we don't want to do sacrifice. But that's what you mean when, when you say I love you. I mean, yeah. the, it's, it's right above us here on the crucifix yeah. that I'm... I'm going to put your needs before my own in this. Yes, moment. but, you know, that's what sacri That's what love is. You know, I always say, you know, love is when you, you know, kid is crying at three in the morning <laughs> because you need to change diapers. That's sacrifice. You nobody wants to like, yeah, let's go get poop. You know? <laughs> that's not, but that's what love it is. This is what sacrifice is. I go because that's what I need to do. So four steps to ask a girl out. First one, ask in person. Do not text. No. no. If you can face to face, don't ask. If you can see her face to face. If you don't have the courage to ask in person, yeah. that, she, that just makes you no, so much you harder ask. for her. Second, tell her why you are asking. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mary, I'm asking you because I see something on you because I like, kind of tell her why you are asking. I'd like to get you know, to know you better. Yes, mm -hmm. I want to know you better. You know, for, I who, see for who you are, not just because. Exactly. You know, I, just so she knows that you're not coming from anywhere. You know, just like, oh, she's beautiful. I'm going to ask. No. Hey, I've been observing you. I've been, you know, seeing that you are a, a person of prayer. I see you always on the 9 p.m. mass. And, you know, I want to, I want to know you. I want to know you better. Three. Tell her what you are asking. I'm asking you in a date. Use these words. I am <laughs> asking you in a date. Because girls don't want to hang out. They have girls that they can go hang out with yes. and watch a Amen. show. Yes. Be specific. This is clear. a date. And I this always tell the ladies, too, if you have gone and, and hung out with someone and they haven't said it was a date, it wasn't a date. Don't consider it a date. It has, if you're guessing, it. it's not a date. Say it. Tell her who you're asking. There are many different types of dating. Make sure that you articulate what you're asking. Four, have a plan. Don't go there like, whatever you want. No, this is what <laughs> we're going to do. This is, you know, we're going to go to the park. We're going to have, you know, have a plan. This is what I want you to do with me today. And something that you can talk to as well. Absolutely. Like, you don't want to yeah. watch a two and a half hour movie looking no. straight forward <laughs> and not talking to each other. Yeah, and something that's the other thing. Yeah, it, yeah. In movie, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of that's a weird, point, yeah, like, like yeah, let's go to my apartment. No, no, go to your apartment. <laughs> that's stupid. You know, that's putting yourself in, in, in bad mm -hmm. situations. And just know the risk. It's worth the risk. As someone out in a date, it is hard, but it's worth. It's so make sure that you, make sure that, you know, you do that. So those four steps, you know, asking person, you know, Ask with a couple of days, three days. Don't 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 feel that you have to ask like, hey, can you go three months? No, they ask about three days. Only ask if you have that romantic interest. Mm -hmm. You know, ask somebody new. Be open and honest. Only about forty-five to fifty minutes. Have a plan. You ask, you pay for it. <laughs> you know, be reasonable on spending money. No touchy. That's right. <laughs> you know, you know, that's the, that's, you know, tell people that can support you, you know, yeah. tell your bodies like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm asking this person that they can support you. And for God's sake, go alone. Yeah. yeah. You Absolutely. know, it's a date. Yeah. It's you and her. So. And, and once you get to that point where you're defining the relationship, l let it be the time that it is. If it's been three months, let it be three months. It doesn't have to be like a two year relationship. And uh, mm -hmm. like, wow, we got a, find the house tomorrow, I guess, and plan what <laughs> kind of kids' names we're going to do. Yeah, and, 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 and it, yeah, and it's, that's, n you asking a date, it's not that you marry her tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, you asking her in a date. So just, be honest, and, and just say, this is what we, you know, this is what it is. 
But it brings us to the whole purpose yeah, of what it means when I say I love you, how you brought up sacrifice. Mm-hmm. And even uh, being on the guides end, what, what it means when, when you're thinking about engagement. I think the most powerful thing that I heard I think, was, was Jason Everett saying, uh, look, look at the wedding vows that you'll say on your day. If you, if you can say those vows to her, that, that means that you're, you're pretty much, you feel pretty ready to, uh, for, for matrimony. But there's so much to learn. And I think that is, do. the other thing is like, you're never going to be ready to yeah, matrimony. ready is a... Matrimony is, is going to make you ready to be married. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's, I think it's, uh, you're never going to be ready. But through the sacrament, you have the sacrament with you. The sacrament give you the power. That's what, as Catholics, that's what we believe. The sacraments give us what we need. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like anointing of the sick. It's not that you have to be dead. No, you're going <laughs> to give you what you need for that time of your life. Mm-hmm. So marriage is going to give you what you need. The graces, you know, the gifts that you need to be faithful to that. That You know, like in the same way, ordination. Mm-hmm. You're never going to be ready to get ordained. Of course, you're going to have the process, you're going to have the studies, but ordination is what makes you ready to serve the Lord mm-hmm. on his people. So matrimony is what makes you be ready to serve the Lord in your wife, in your husband, your kids, in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and to echo that sentiment, you know, even as a newlywed, I've seen the Holy Spirit work And my husband, and I think one of the things that, you know, God spoke to me when we were dating was that, like, if he's open, you know, to listening to God in prayer and especially to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, then the Lord will move him and empower him, you know, in ways. And and that was really, you know, helpful to me because I think my temptation was to even try to be a little controlling. (laughs) And I think, you know, the grace of the sacrament is real. And so when you're choosing a person, I think what we should, you know, focus on is choosing that person who is docile to the Holy Spirit, and then God will take care of the rest. Well, we, we can go on so much about yes, everything can, yes. and uh, talk about so much more. I, I, is that pretty much 26? Yeah, well, th- thank you, Courtney and, and Father Javon, for sharing just a small snippet of what of what we all need to hear for, for, for both the men and the women. But thank you all for your time. So. Yes. And next time we'll charge for our services. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Well, uh, thank you to everyone in our listening audience, whether you're dating right now, uh, in, a, in a time of engagement or, or newlyweds, or if you're if you're the single man or woman and you say, I have no idea what next steps to take. Maybe there's someone that I like, but I don't know what to do. Um, I hope you can take something home with you today to, to learn. Always keep learning. Yeah, ask him your, your date. Best. Ask her in a date. That's the way, the only way we're going to do. Take take the risk. That's the yeah, only way to have risk. courage. Yeah, be bold. Oh, remember you can find our show wherever you get your podcast by searching for Belonging for Young Catholic Adults or wherever you get your podcast. Or you can find us online at nashvillecr.org. Uh, you can also listen to us on 100.5 FM Thursdays at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. as well. My name is Zach Jansen. Special thank you to Father Javon, Courtney Soto, and Jim Crow doing a lot with our show today. My name is Zach Jansen. Thank you for listening to Belonging on Nashville Catholic Radio.